If you want to learn how to use bindable functions in Roblox Studio to allow two scripts to communicate with each other and send information, then you're going to want to make sure you watch all this video so you don't miss out on anything. But let's get started. So welcome back to another video. My name is Alvin Blocks. If it's your first time here, make sure you subscribed and that you've turned on the notification bell. Today, we are going to be learning about bindable functions. So in my previous video, we had a look at bindable events. And what bindable events let you do is they let you, uh, they let you have two scripts in the server and you can have one script, call, call the other script and trigger it to do another task. So the difference between bindable events and bindable functions is that a bindable event will trigger another uh, script to do something and the bindable function will do the same thing but the difference is that a bindable function the script which you trigger will return a value back to the original script and we're going to have a look at some examples in a minute but an ex uh, just a quick example would be you could return whether what you triggered was a success or whether it errored or if something went wrong but the example that we're going to be looking at today is we are going to have a set of parts in the game let's just bring them up here so these are our parts and we're going to have two scripts one's going to be an invoker and that's going to be the script which triggers the bindable function and tells the second script to execute some code and then the second script over here get number of parts is where we're actually going to code it to find out how, how many parts are in the game and then we're going to also code it so that it will send back the number of parts to this original invoker script so it's two scripts working together to perform a specific task now you could of course do this all in one script but this is obviously just for tutorial to show you how this all works so a bindable function just like a bindable event it can only uh, go or it can only talk between two server scripts okay so you can't you can't have a bindable function working with a local script which is on the client uh, on a player and also talking with a, uh, a server script on the server it has to be server to server so you could have two scripts uh, on the server but uh, not when you're trying to work with filtering enabled or experimental mode or anything like that so if you want to use uh, if you want to make your game filtering enabled you have to use remote events and functions and I've done some videos on those as well you can click on the card in the top right corner of the screen to see those so let's get started by going into our invoker script now this is where we're going to uh, call this bindable function and all you have to do is uh, well because what's going to happen is we're going to call this uh, bindable function and because it's returning a value to us we'll have to set it as a variable so my variable is called number of parts and I'm just setting that to game.workspace.bindable function colon invoke now what this means is it's going to imagine that it's going to substitute this piece of code here what I've selected with the actual value so let's say the second script counted 50 parts in the game then just imagine that this selection would get uh, substituted and the word and the numbers 50 would be added in there and if we print it out later on it will print out 50 so the script this piece of code is making a request to the bindable event and it's going to return back the number of parts uh, to this variable and then later we will be able to print this variable out and it will give us the number of parts in the game or in this model. So that's all you have to do to invoke it. You have to reference the bindable function, so game.workspace.bindable function because it's in here and then you have to say colon invoke uh, with a pair of parentheses. So if you want to add a bindable function and you don't yet know, you just have to click on the workspace or wherever you want to put it. Click on this little plus and then type in bindable function and there you go. You can also insert a bindable event if you want. So that is how you invoke and you see I've got a little comment. So the user wants to count how many, uh, the number of parts in the game and this is what's going to do it for them. This is what's going to make the call uh, to do this. So that is the invoking part done what we're going to do now though is we're going to actually work with the get number of parts script so that we can uh, 
uh, we can actually code it so that it counts how many parts and it sends back this value. Okay, so I'm in the get number of parts script and you can see it looks a little bit different. I've just written out the the uh, the way that you have to uh, write these out, this function, uh, just to save a little bit of time. So on the, uh, on the get number of parts script, this is what's going to be receiving the request from the bindable function. And we're going to want to uh, write some code inside of here. So any code inside of here uh, will run. Uh, when the bindable function is invoked okay so if we put print hello in here and we run this script it's going to print out hello uh, because the first script has made a request to the second script and the second script has been uh, scripted to print out the words hello whenever it gets invoked. So we've just invoked our bindable function and we've printed something out. So let's go back into our script and let's adjust this to make it a little bit more advanced. We're gonna count up how many parts we've got in the game and then we're going to send them back. So to do this, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to first uh, get the children of this model because we only want to count how many are in this model. So we're gonna say local parts equals game dot workspace dot parts colon get children okay so this parts variable will be uh, it will be all of the children it contains every single part inside of this model we then want to just get the number of parts so to do that we can say local number of parts equals hashtag parts and this will return uh, the number of parts contained in this variable so we've just got all the children so all of these are children of the model and this line is just counting up how many of, of those parts there are so now that we've done that we just want to return back the number of parts to the original script to do this we just have to say return and we can say the variable number of parts so hopefully this is going to count up all of the parts in the game and then what it's going to do is it's going to return the number of parts back to us. So let's have a go at doing that now and let's go and run this script, open up the output and let's run it, see what it says and you can see it has printed out 120 which means that if you were to count up, if you were to pause the video and count up every single part here you would see 120 parts, trust me. So now that we've done that we're going to take things to the next level and make them a little bit more advanced. Now, what if we wanted to make the script only count up parts with a specific name? We can pass an argument for that. So, an argument is, well, let's say, for example, we want the script to count up the number of parts with a name brick, okay, instead of part. Uh, we can pass an argument here in this parenthesis block, uh, and in speech marks, we can provide as a string a name for our parts which we want it to count up. So let's say we only wanted it to count up uh, parts which are called brick. We can su we can uh, supply it with an argument called brick. But at the minute, this script, uh, the, the this uh, get number of parts script, uh, doesn't know what what this brick means. We have to give it a meaning. So because we've sent an argument on the invoker side. We have to go into our second script, which is picking up the trigger, and we also have to add it in here. But it doesn't have to be the same name, uh, because we obviously might we might not know what this uh, argument might be, because we might call it midway through a game with a specific value which might change. So we always have to call it something different. And as I said earlier, remember when I said how we're substituting in with this part here, we got we were we were substituting to this to this variable the number of parts. Just like arguments, what we're going to do is we're going to substitute. Let's have a very let's call this argument name. We're going to substitute name with the argument which we provide. So in this case, it's going to be brick. And let's go back into the get number of parts script, and what we can do now is we can say print name, and what this is going to do is it's going to print out the word brick. Let's have a look and see if it does that. Let's open up the output and let's go and run the game. Ok, 
Okay, so you can see it has printed out brick as well as the 120 uh, because it has got the name which has been passed over as brick and it is now going to print it out. So that is how you use arguments and now we can put this all together to modify our script to make it only, uh, only return back the number of parts which are called a specific name. So to do this, let's just tidy up our code by just removing a couple of things we don't need. Uh, let's just get rid of this print name because we won't be needing that. And let's just get rid of this local number of parts for now because we're not actually going to be counting up how many of these parts there are yet. We're going to have to use a for loop to increment a variable because we don't know whether the part going, is called uh, the argument if it's called brick or not. Uh, so we don't want to automatically count them up before checking. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to just want to create a for loop which will loop through all of these parts and check whether its name is equal to the argument. So to do this we can say for i and i is going to be the counter so each time it runs it's going to increment increase by one and then we can say comma part part's going to be the current part which we're iterating through and then we can say in pairs open bracket close bracket parts do and we can drop our line and parts is what we're going to be iterating through so all of the parts uh, through get children and so inside of here we just need to check if part dot name equals equals name which is our argument so if the parts name is the same as the argument then what we want to do is we just want to quickly write our uh, number of parts variable again so we can say local number of parts equals zero for now and remember each time this gets invoked it will be reset to zero and then we can increase it every time we have a part which matches the name of the argument so we can say number of parts equals number of parts plus one and now what we can do is we can make sure that we're returning number of parts back to the original script so we need to have some parts which are called brick for this to actually work but for now let's head back and run this again remember none of our parts are currently called brick so it should return zero there we go so it's returned zero because there are no parts in the game called brick let's go and change a couple of parts to brick and let's rerun this you can see now that there are 12 parts called brick. And if we go into our model, you can see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 parts are called brick. So what's happened is the invoker has passed this argument. It's been picked up by our second script, substituted in uh, as name. And it's checked to see whether the part's name is equal to that argument. If it is, the number of parts is being incremented by 1 and then we're returning number of parts back to the original script so that we can then use it uh, to print it out on our original script. But you may be thinking, why do we have to use two scripts for this instead of just one? Well, you could just use one script if you want, but there are lots of different purposes for bindable events. You may want to return something back to, a, to your original script from a different script um, and then use it in your original script to work out some other things lots of different uses you can use them um, for server to server talking uh, for talking between two scripts but it's something you really need to know and it's very helpful when you're working on your game because you might want to have one script for doing one thing another script for doing something else and you want to trigger each one based on different things and you want to pass messages and arguments uh, between them so it's very useful for that kind of communication uh, but if you want to do remote events, remote functions, I've got lots of tutorials on my channel. As I've already said, there's a link in the card, uh, which you'll be able to click. And that is the end of this tutorial. So if you enjoyed it, please leave a like, make sure to subscribe, turn on the notification bell. And I will see you in the next video. This is Alvin Blocks telling you to keep scripting.